If you are an ambitious person, you probably have many things you want to do outside of work, like launch a business, complete a course, learn a language, or even just exercise, travel, and spend time with family and friends. But your life is likely so busy right now that you can barely keep up with your current demands. And that is pretty frustrating because you can't find the time and energy to make significant progress on the things that matter to you. If that sounds familiar, then keep watching because I'll show you step by step how you can optimize your time and energy to achieve your career, health and relationship goals. Even if you have a busy schedule, I guarantee that the little free time you have available right now is more than enough for you to level up in these different areas of life. Hello friends and welcome back to the channel. Today we'll talk about how to optimize your most precious resources, your time and energy to do more of what truly matters to you. If you get to the end of a workday feeling exhausted, like you don't have the energy for anything else, I totally get you, because that was me for the first three years of my PhD. I wanted to launch a business, but my PhD was sucking all my time and energy. I'd wake up, go to work, maybe fit in a workout, cook dinner, and that was it for the day. No progress made on my business. I'd often blame on my PhD for my lack of progress, while in reality the real problem was my lack of planning skills. But after years of trying different things and failing in different ways, I figured out a system that allowed me to live according to my own priorities. In the final three years of my PhD, I launched a business, started running, learned a new language and still managed to travel to different countries and nurture important relationships. If you're ready to exit the autopilot mode and take control of your life, keep watching because I'll share the exact five-step system that I use to stay productive and achieve my goals while enjoying my life outside of work. Also, I shared a bonus tip for finding energy and staying focused when you are already tired after a long day of work. If you're new here, my name is Mary, I'm a doctor turned entrepreneur and and on this channel, I share tips to help you take action in creating a more fulfilling life. Subscribe to the channel to become part of this amazing community of driven people and to get inspired to create the life of your dreams. Without further ado, let's dive into the five steps to optimize your life for what matters most. Step number one is to define what matters. And for that, you need to ask yourself a few questions. What do you want to make time for? Why is that important to you? And how is that aligned with your vision for life? It's important to remember that the things that really matter will change over time. In some seasons of life, you will be very focused on work, on other seasons it's gonna be health, and sometimes it's gonna be your relationships. It's so important to honor your season and really prioritize what is important in that moment. And whenever things feel a little off, it's an indication that you need to rethink your priorities. I remember in the past, if I was too focused on one area of my life for too long of a period of time, I'd feel like I needed a little shift, and that's totally normal. Sometimes you're going to prioritize different areas of life, and sometimes within the same area of life, you may shift your priorities. For example, in my fitness routine, sometimes I'm focused on my gym workouts, sometimes it is running, and sometimes it is cycling. The depending on the season of life I'm in, and I really find that having that change keeps it more interesting for me. If you want my help to figure out what matters to you and work out a routine that helps you achieve your goals, make sure to check out the first link in the description below. Step number two is to audit your time. The goal here is to find out how you're spending your time and energy during an ordinary week in your life. I'd encourage you to first estimate 
estimate how much time you spend on different things and then to actually measure it for a whole week. You will be surprised what you will find out. You may find it helpful to use an app called Toggle Track to track your time. I've been using it for a while to track my work and it is absolutely brilliant. It really helps you break down how long you spend on projects and tasks every single day. You can also check out a report at the end of the week to see those figures. For reference, I'm going to share my time estimates and I'll commit to actually tracking it during this week and I'll leave in the comments below how I actually spent my time during this week. I'm actually pretty curious to run this experiment. I personally find this exercise quite helpful because it helps me make sure that I'm spending my time on the things that I say are important to me. And I know that measuring your time can be quite challenging, but one thing I definitely recommend that you do is to check how you're spending your screen time. And that is super simple to do. You can just check out the screen time app on your phone and check the breakdown to see how you're spending your time on your phone. And the same goes to your laptop or iPad. You can check how long you're spending on each app. And if you find that you use the same internet browser for both productive tasks and for entertainment, what you can do is to use an extension to check how you're spending your time online. On Google Chrome, you can use an extension called Time Tracker and it will give you a breakdown of how long you spent on each website. And if you find that you're spending too much time on your phone, make sure to check out this video here where I share the strategies to reduce your screen time. Step number three is to make intentional choices. Here I suggest that you do the start, stop, continue exercise. First, write down your start list. For that, check exercise one and ask yourself, what are the things I wish I had time for? And what things do I want to start doing to achieve those goals? And then you can write your stop list. Considering the things that you want to do and the things that you're currently doing, what is it that you need to stop doing because it's not aligned with your goals or maybe it's distracting you from achieving them? For me personally, when I was doing my PhD and I checked what really mattered to me, I found out that I wanted to start a business. When I checked how I was spending my time, I found out that I was spending over 10 hours on Instagram every single week and that I was spending a lot of time on social occasions that didn't really align with who I was and what I wanted to do. So I decided to quit social media and limit the time that I would spend on some social occasions. This way I could prioritize my business, my fitness and also sleep. Finally, write down your continue list. What are the things that you're currently doing that are working really well for you? For me, that was reading, cooking, working out and spending time with a few friends. Step number four is to follow a routine. Having a routine really simplifies your life. It allows you to save a lot of mental energy and it gives you a sense of calm and control of your life. You can spend your time only once thinking about how you want to live your life. Then you can execute on that plan knowing that you're living by your own priorities. When designing your routine, define your actions and habits based on what you want to achieve. Then you can schedule a time of the day and a day of the week to completing them. For example, when I was balancing my PhD and business, every weekday I'd do my PhD work first and then I'd dedicate time in the evening to working on my business and also my weekends. That really worked for me. And on the health front, I tried to exercise every day. Some days I would fail, but that was okay because even achieving five days a week, that was great for me. I remember at that time my focus was doing yoga because I could just literally get my mat out and in 30 minutes I would have finished my workout for the day. And because it was the middle of the pandemic, I also started running because all the gyms were closed. And that was great because I could start running pretty much the minute I got out of the house and finish the run when I got back to the house. That was a very time efficient way to work out. Take some 
some time to design not only your morning and night routines, but also your start and end of the day rituals. Think about the things you could include in these routines to work on your self-discipline and your self-confidence. For me personally, I would always include a workout and some time to get ready in the morning. And also, I'd make sure that I would plan my day and my tasks before starting work. And that really helped me put my mind into a productive stage. And having a structure to my day really helps me make consistent progress towards my goals. I'll share a video later this month to talk about my routines so make sure to subscribe to the channel or check it out if it is already available step number five is to create a plan and I'm a huge fan of monthly planning because a monthly plan helps me define short-term tasks aligned with my long-term goals. A month is such a nice period of time because it creates enough urgency for me to take action immediately, but also is enough time for me to see some actual progress. I use my monthly planner to define goals aligned with my New Year's resolutions and also track habits that I want to establish in that month. I'm such a big believer of monthly planning that I have been running free monthly planning workshops to everyone in my community. This way I can help you achieve your goals and create work-life balance. Download my free monthly planner Notion template to get notified of the next monthly planning workshop. Setting goals for the month makes it really easy for me to set priorities every week and that makes it so easy for me to understand what are the top tasks that I need to do every single day. And having this overall vision really gives me a lot of motivation because I can clearly see how the tasks I'm doing are contributing to the goals that I have. When I'm planning my day, I prioritize doing tasks that are important and difficult in the morning because I have more energy, and I leave tasks that are less important and require less energy for the evening when I don't have much energy left. In the morning and afternoon, I do my deep work, that is writing and filming for YouTube, planning my workshops, and delivering my coaching program. And in the evening, I do all those life admin tasks like cooking, cleaning, booking stuff, messaging people, etc. One thing that I love about my planner is that I can visualize all my tasks, that is, for my personal and professional lives. When I feel like I don't have energy to do certain tasks, I can always pick another task that takes less energy to do. And that way, I keep myself productive all day. One key mindset shift I had to unlock another level of success was this. Use the weekend to build the future life you want, not to escape the current life you have. I remember in the past, I used to think that the weekends were to do fun stuff, relax, eat whatever I wanted, and weekdays were for work, exercise and eat well, not the weekends. Now I think that the weekends are a great opportunity for us to reprioritize our lives and do the things that are really important to us. And now I personally love going to the gym on the weekends because it's so quiet. I love cooking on the weekends so I have healthy meals during the week. I also like to do things in my own pace because sometimes during the weekdays it can feel a little too busy. Now you have a goal, a plan, and a system, and it is time to execute it. And that's when most people fail. And the most common reason why people fail is because they think they don't have enough time or energy to do it. Which brings us nicely into the bonus tip of this video. The big question is how to find energy and stay focused. What I found from experience was that every time I said I don't have time or energy was because I was thinking about the task as something tedious, 
difficult and boring. And every time I managed to convince myself to get started, I would feel energized. To convince myself to get started, I'd reframe the task as something easy, fun and exciting by asking these three questions. What would this task look like if it were fun, if it were easy and if it were exciting? To make a task more fun, you can add some music, do it with a friend, get a drink or some food or even go to a coffee shop or library. To make it easier, you can break it down into smaller tasks and just commit to doing something super easy to start. Really try to simplify the task in your head just to get yourself started. To make it more exciting, instead of thinking about this task in particular, think about the big picture. I always try to reframe the thing that I'm doing right now as the action that helps me build the future life I want. This is similar to that anecdote of a traveler walking past a construction site and asking the three builders what they're doing. The first one says, I'm laying bricks. The second one says, I'm building a wall. And the third one says, I'm building a cathedral. This story highlights the different perspectives that different people have on the exact same task. So maybe the reason why you feel like you don't have energy, that you're demotivated, is because you are focusing too much on the task and not on the overall vision for what you're building. So remind yourself of your bigger vision, that you're building a business and that you're becoming fitter and stronger. To keep myself focused, I define how long I want to spend doing that task. If I feel like I don't have much energy, I can just say I'll do 30 minutes and then I'll see how I feel. And really, after 30 minutes, if I feel like I don't have the energy to do this, that's okay, I leave it and I know that I've given all that I had on that day. On days, you only have 40%. If you give 40%, that was 100%. To stay focused, I remove distractions. And for me personally, the biggest source of distraction in my life is my phone. So just by keeping it away from me in a different room, I can totally focus on another task. Next time you're debating with yourself when your mind says, I don't have enough energy to do this perfect action, ask yourself, what small action do I have energy to do right now? Once you start, you probably feel energized and motivated to keep going. But if you don't, you can just stop knowing that you have given all you had. And the key here is not to push yourself too hard, because if you do that and you continue going even when you don't have the energy, you'll probably feel less likely to do it next time. Remind yourself that small progress is still progress. If you want my personal help to optimize your life for what matters to you, click the top link in the description below. I'll help you improve your productivity and figure out the best routine to achieve your goals. Don't delay, do something now that your future self will thank you for. Thanks for watching until the end. If you want to improve your time management skills, I suggest that you watch this video next. I hope to see you there. Bye!